magical rainy day here in Newcastle and I say magical because it, it just feels so nice to be recording a yin yoga practice, a really short one to bring ourselves from reactivity into responsive. This is a beautiful yin practice for somebody who doesn't have much time and also off the back of my nervous system workshops. This is a great one to recognize stress, tension, and when we're living in our fight flight or down into our dorsal vagal free state as to what we can do to release the tension. So I'm going to share a technique first from the book, The Healing Power of the Vagus Nerve. This is a technique that he speaks about in his book, and it's something anyone can do in any space. And it's helped myself and my clients immensely. So from Stanley Rosenberg, and I highly recommend getting his book. This practice will be about 20 minutes long. I recommend having a bolster. You will need a wall. If you don't have a bolster, a cushion or a block would be perfect. So just taking a seat for a moment while I share this technique from Stanley Rosenberg. In his book, he talks quite widely on the 12 cranial nerves um, that of course are intertwined within our brainstem and our, ner our autonomic nervous system. Now specifically five cranial nerves, cranial nerve five, seven, nine, 10, and 11, that of course uh, move into the face and our senses, our facial muscles, but also our um, trapezius and our SCM muscle, our sternocleidomastoid. Now I talk about this in the workshops and he of course dives into it in the book, but if any of these cranial nerves are out of whack and are out of equilibrium, then we will find it really difficult to, and almost impossible, to access back into our ventral vagal state, the one of social engagement. So this technique has helped me a lot. And we intertwine the fingers this way. So what we're looking for is the tips of the fingers to press into the back of the head, right near the brainstem. So the brainstem is located in this area here, and we'll be pressing those finger tips into the back of the head. So we are going to lie down. Um, I'm going to bend my knees because I don't have much space here, clearly. But you can straighten your legs if you'd like to. So we're going to bring our hands up with the palms facing up and intertwine our fingers. So with that position, we're now going to rest those fingers underneath our head. And you should feel the tips of your fingers press into your skull. I'm not fully gripping it, but... The weight of my head relaxed onto those fingertips, I can definitely feel that in the back of my skull. If your legs are extended, just start to close down your eyes. And just simply notice your breath for a moment or two. And then when you feel ready, I'm gonna get you to open your eyes again and keeping the fingers and the head in exactly the same position, we are going to turn our gaze to the right. So I'm keeping my eyes open and I'm looking to the right. And we're gonna take anywhere between say five to 10 breaths. Breathing slowly through the nose and out through the nose. Still looking to the right. you've done maybe about 30 to 45 seconds maybe you feel you need more slowly come back to center keep your eyes open and then just keeping the head as is shift the gaze to the left and same deal about five to ten breaths up to about a minute
and slowly just letting those hands go. I'll explain a bit more into that technique at the end of this practice. From this lying down position, we are going to slide the block or bolster underneath our hips, coming to our first yin pose, supported bridge. This particular pose is a beautiful one for allowing the blood to start to flow from the base of our bodies, of course, into our digestive system, all our inner landscape and organs. Of course, into the heart space and down into the throat and into the brain. This particular practice will only be about a 20 minute practice. I know that we are all so strapped for time. But if we keep continuing the dialogue of being busy and overwhelmed, and we keep saying the words, I am stressed, I am exhausted, I am overwhelmed, then we start to become our environment. We are practicing more of the same. So I want this to be an accessible practice that you can do whenever you feel the need. We're going to spend about 10 more breaths in this pose. So really letting yourself melt into this delicious yin shape. Noticing the weight of your shoulders, your bones. And then simply just paying attention to your breath. With your inhale through the nose, feel the expansion into the belly, the rib cage, and the lungs. And then exhale, lungs, rib cage, belly. Just keep going. Already, I'm starting to feel a massive shift. I've had quite a big day today and I'm starting to feel so calm, relaxed and at ease in my body just after a couple of minutes. Take three more breaths here. No need to rush. Take one more breath in and a breath out. Gently push into those heels, slide the object out from underneath you. Gently just roll to one side into a fetal position and pause. Taking a moment here to really give back to your body, to really soak up that moment of goodness and nurturing and self-care. And let that vibrate into every cell of your body. Pushing in to one of the hands. We're going to use the bolster or the block as we now come into a beautiful heart opener. So many of us in the Western world really struggle because we sit in chairs and we are overextending into these upper back muscles, the trapezius and SCM that I mentioned before. So these guys are getting really triggered. And again, that's cranial nerve 11, right? Which is affecting, of course, our nervous system. If these eyes are consistently on, we are either living in spinal sympathetic or shut down. It is so important that recognizing these areas of tension in the body and doing something about it so we can travel back up the hierarchy and ladder back to our ventral vagal is so damn important. It is only in our social engagement system and ventral vagal that our digestive system works, that we can be present to make a choice and that we can be responsive, not reactive. So sliding the bolster to about the mid part of our back. And if you need to prop the bolster up with a couple of blocks, do so. 
the soles of their feet will go together and we're going to open the heart space up here really opening this heart out to the sky now if you don't have a bolster you can just do this lying on the ground if this is not for you with the hips then you can bend the, and uh, place the feet hip distance and knock the knees in and again we're going to stay here for 10 breaths so i really invite you to really now send your energy and attention to your inhale and your exhale when we breathe and stimulate our vagus nerve which of course connects our gut and our brain we tell our nervous system that we are safe and we are okay so without changing anything about where you are in your body i invite you now to inhale and feel the expansion of the belly feel the expansion of the rib cage and then feel the expansion of the lungs. Exhale, deflate the lungs. Exhale, deflate the rib cage. And exhale, deflate the belly to spine. Breathe in. Breathe out. There's absolutely nothing for you to do in this moment. Just simply be. Eight more breaths to go. I invite you to take one more full breath in, fully in. And fully out. Once again, rolling to one side and just curling into a little ball in a fetal position. Take three breaths here. It's highly likely by this point you're feeling quite relaxed. Yin is absolutely magical for resetting our nervous system. It gives us an opportunity to pause. Slowly from here, we make our way to our final pose, and this is where we use the wall. So we are going to slide in sideways and let the feet rest up onto the wall. You'll notice I'm not locking out my legs. I have a soft knee bend. For today, I'm going to let my hands just rest on my rib cage so I can feel my breath, but you can take any arm variation of choice. This legs up the wall pose is, I believe, one of the best poses in yin for reducing anxiety, for recognizing stress and tension in the body and shifting that tension into acceptance and compassion. Again, we allow the blood to travel from the extremities into the heart space, into the chest, and then, of course, into the brain. And the more blood we get to the brain, the more we tell our nervous system we are safe. Combining that practice with breath work from the stimulation of the vagus nerve, it's such a quick way to bring ourselves out of anxiety and reactivity into presence and awareness. So closing down your eyes and just finishing in this beautiful shape. Really being aware of your breath to slow it down as you inhale through the nose, expand everything up and out. And exhale, just start to let everything go. You have given yourself this time and space you have chosen to put this time aside for you, for your health, for your mental, spiritual, emotional and physical health. It is up to us as humans which plants we choose to water. 
whatever it is that we are practicing is what will continue. So the more stress we choose to place ourselves under, the more busy we decide to be in our lifestyles and the more we say yes to situations where we wish we'd say no. Our bodies adapt to that environment and we are just asking for more. So on the flip side, the more that we practice saying no and filling our cup, the more that we practice putting ourselves first before others and the more we practice pausing and looking after our self-care, then that starts to become our environment. Take five more beautiful breaths here. Take one more full breath in. And an open mouth breath out. Do that one more time, fully in five, four, three, two, one. Hold that in, four, three, two, one. Slow exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one. Slowly bend one knee and bend the other. Again, rolling to your side, this time curling into a ball of gratitude and appreciation. Our brains are wired to see the negative. We have a negative bias stemming back from our primal days. We can have a thousand good things happen in our day, but one negative comment or remark or situation and we focus on that. So today in your day, spend 10 or 20 seconds in the good moments. The ones that just happen throughout your day, hugging a friend, being able to have a warm shower, to sit down for lunch, to be able to smile at a stranger across the road. Let yourself immerse in this 10 or 20 seconds worth of gratitude in your body and don't let it pass you by. That is start, how we start to rewire those brains to move from that negativity bias to the practice of seeing more gratitude and appreciation. Slowly start to come up to a seated position. There's no rush. Take a moment here to pause. Like anything, if we want a muscle to grow, we have to work at it. If we want to start to see change in our nervous system and in our bodies, to start to see more compassion, to start to experience more love, and to start to feel more healthier in our bodies, we need to start practicing letting go of reactivity and autopilot and allowing ourselves to choose to be responsive even when the situation is challenging. And that is on us. I guarantee you 99% of the situations that unfold around us are simply just uncomfortable. They're unpleasant. They might be horrible, but they're not life-threatening, which means that we do not need to put our nervous system in a closed reactive position in our fight flight and shut down our digestive system we can choose to stay open a body that is open is responsive kind compassionate and has the ability to change take a breath in and a breath out bringing the thumbs to the third eye just taking a moment to thank yourself for showing up today and that is all you need to do every single day. 
from my heart to yours. Namaste. Don't forget guys, my book, Watch Your Language, is out now. Watch Your Language is a book about how shifting our dialogue is available to all of us, from judgment and comparison to acceptance and self-compassion. It is about recognizing with the be here method that I speak in my book of how we can see in our body how emotions and situations can affect us by choosing to see it differently and staying open in the moment so that we can make a choice to look after this physical self of ours so that we can mentally make the right choices, not just for ourselves, but for those around us. The link is in the bio for the book. I hope that this practice has helped you. Let me know in the comments how you go with this and I'd love to hear from you. Thank you guys and as always, remember to watch your language. Thank you.